Oh, oh my god. <laughs> hey golfers, I'm Drew Maholder, Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. We are on the driving range today with, well, we each have one fake club and one real club uh, in our hands here, Thomas. Um, I went to uh, our inventory team and I uh, found a couple of fake clubs that they recently identified. And so, and then I found the kind of real counterparts in our inventory. Um, that have been certified uh, to be listed online. And so I brought those out here. We're gonna test them. So we've got a couple of models that are, you know, a couple years old with an iron set, and then that driver's probably near 10 years old. But regardless, we've got some fake counterfeit clubs to test against their real counterparts. So I'm very interested to see how this goes. Yeah, I think it's gonna be an interesting test to see, you know, is, is ball speed the same? Is the yeah. performance the same? Does it sound the same? Yeah. Um, but we definitely know they do not look the same. Right. If you take a closer look, yeah. you can definitely identify some differences between mm -hmm. the, the clubs. And I am holding the Titleist 913 D2 driver. I have the fake and the counterfeit, and I've identified five things with this yeah. particular driver that is pretty obvious that it, it's fake. If you take a little closer look. So I'm going to explain what these are mm -hmm. with this with this driver, and then I'll let you explain what you're seeing with the irons. Sure. Um, so first thing we're seeing here is the Titleist logo. So the Titleist logo on top of the, just underneath the toe of the club, it's quite significantly smaller on the fake club. Um, it also it's a different it's font. A, just a different it's font. A different I mean, font. That, that is yeah. not a that's not a it's, Titleist font at all. It's not <laughs> even close. Yeah. So this one's pretty pretty obvious. Uh, we're also looking at the bottom of the golf club. You can definitely see, yeah, this one's being kind of buffed off a little bit, but even without the buffing off on the fake club, it doesn't have any of the red and the white mm -hmm. trademark colors that you typically see on a Titleist 913 driver. Yep. So I highly recommend, if you are unsure that your driver is real or fake, is to go to the actual websites, yeah. the Titleist website, and take a look at the pictures of that particular club. Yep. Um, what I find interesting here is I don't really see much different with the face. No. So I'm looking down at the face here, and they look exactly the same. However, I turn it over and I take a look at the crown. This is where it gets interesting. Mm -hmm. So Titleist, they've always had their, you know, their alignment aid arrow here. It's been yeah. pr pretty obvious that you kind of know what a Titleist one looks like. This one doesn't even have the, the line and the arrow is a lot smaller. Yeah. And it's, it's just totally different. Clearly design. totally different. Yeah. And then we can also see the color of the crown. It's yeah, it's, it's a lot More lighter a gray, gray yeah. and this is a this is a black. Yeah. It's interesting because Titleist has had gray crowns in the past with their drivers. I think maybe the 910 series had a gray, or maybe 915. One of the 917 two, was. Yeah. Yep. Maybe 917. There you go. That's what it is. But the 913 definitely has the, a black glossy look, and that's just not uh, black right. on that on that fake one. So. And then the final thing I'm seeing here with this driver is just the edging, just where kind of how that's being put together. It's very very rough on the yep. counterfeit club around the, around the back and around the edging where it's a lot much cleaner on the yep. real club. Yeah, so, and then there's a, actually the, these irons, so this is a tailor-made Sim Max OS irons. Um, these are actually, it's pretty good counterfeit, um, I will say in terms of the design, but um, the, I got the fake one here in my left hand. You can know, one thing I noticed for sure is a speed bridge um, font here is actually lighter and almost hard to see. On the real club, you can very clearly see in darker font speed bridge for that speed bridge technology there. Um, you can see on the through slot speed pocket on the sole, this club here is the real one, very sharp and clean and the design. And on this one is a little bit rougher, not as smooth as you can see there. And then uh, the one thing too I want to point out is the serial number. So you can see a serial number on the real club towards uh, kind of on the hosel here, and you cannot see one on the counterfeit club. So there's, and I think that's one of the kind of the key elements maybe look for too if you're maybe unsure. Usually you might, you're going to see a serial number somewhere on that golf club if it's real. Some of those counterfeits might not have one, is that's another thing to look for. But um, I can also see just, the, it seems like a, a quality of construction is a little bit off too on some of these counterfeit ones. So uh, I, I'm curious now on the testing because sound, feel, performance, I mean, it's all gonna be a mystery to me, so. Right, yeah, so we've identified which one is real, which one is not real. Let's take a look at the numbers and see how they perform. All right, so Thomas, you've got the eight irons now, the Sim Max OS. Um, because the set that we had in inventory uh, was actually, for the comparison of the shaft, eight through gap. So we're taking the eight irons here. Okay. Um, the 
fake set there has what appears to be a Mitsubishi Tensai AV Blue. One thing we did notice there too, as we're just looking at them, it does say on there's a little sticker that says exclusively made for TaylorMade. Um, I've never seen that before on um, a SimMax OS set. It might, might still be the case. They might have some sets that have that on there, but it's just something to note as well. And then the, the shaft we have for the SimMax OS, the real set here is the Ventus Blue. Okay. So, um, both yep. are regular, both, both regular. kind of similar weight, so yep. regular flex shafts. Yeah, and I find it interesting looking down at the two of them, they look pretty similar to the mm -hmm. dress. So yeah. this would be this would be an interesting test. Mm -hmm. All right, start with the real or the fake? Let's start with the real one. Start with the real one. All right. Felt pretty good too. Maybe I should switch to graphite. <laughs> I mean, the 60 gram <laughs> shaft. <laughs> Maybe that's your that's your money ball. Yeah. Yeah, they felt like five pretty good swings there. Mm -hmm. That one felt really good. So you had about you got you basically had two that kind of spun a little bit less than the others and went a little bit further, but regardless, you were basically at about a carry distance of about 183. And total 188. Your spin was 68, 68. Um, so it's it, like I was mentioning. It's pretty similar, actually, to your seven iron numbers. Um, so, well, the loft is probably pretty similar. It's to gotta my, be close. To uh, my I know those I those Simmax OS. If I remember right, the seven iron is like 28, uh, in the high 20s somewhere. I think yep. probably 27, 28. It's around. I think it's 28. So and then the eight iron's maybe, probably yeah. in the low 30s, probably 32 ish, something like that. So. Um, it's going to be, you know, it's definitely a stronger loft than 8-iron than most. But, yep. Um, interesting there. What do you think about, I mean, obviously we're talking about a graphite shaft, but a, a strong game improvement iron, so the feel is certainly different than you're used to. Yeah, I mean, it, it felt like it was coming off the club face hot. Yeah. Um, that little, obviously, if this was an 8-iron, I wouldn't normally hit an 8-iron carrying 182. Right. Um, so that's one thing I kind of noticed is just the ball flight was just a little, little different, but... Yeah. For the loft on the golf club, I thought it was pretty good numbers. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, now the fun begins because we can test out this uh, the counterfeit uh, lookalike okay. of the Sim Max OS. And again, that shaft is slightly different, but it's a regular flex and a similar weight. So we have that working for us. Um, let's see what happens. What type of uh, club speed am I looking to match up here? A little over 90 miles. Just a little over 90. 91 on that one on average. 91 so. on average. Okay. Well, swing one, it's out there. Yeah, didn't didn't like turn over okay. quite as much, but how do you how do you, how do you feel about that contact? I guess pretty good. Maybe maybe a touch behind it, but okay. It, it's I mean I know game improvement irons are a little clickier. Yeah. But this sounds even clickier. Yeah, it does. Coming through. It's louder. I can yeah. tell you that. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> I've <have> never <laughs> had that happen before in my life. The well, club just fell off. <laughs> well, good thing this is the counterfeit club. <laughs> that that yeah. explains it, right? Yeah. Yeah. The funny thing is, you actually you smoked it. That's actually you smoked it. It was the uh, farthest shot yet. <laughs> you hit a clean break off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll have okay. to go run and grab that club head <clears throat> yeah. here real quick. Okay. So Drew, we clearly have an, another thing to add in with regards <laughs> yeah. to the counterfeit club is yeah. well, you know, the way it's put together and made. Yeah. Um, well. So I'm actually curious now, I wouldn't mind taking a look at a couple of the other clubs in the set, see how they are made because I feel like that's just not right. That should not no. just come off like that. Well, you that. can see kind of on the inside, like I mean, it's yeah. interesting. Yep. Um, I, mean, it was, I mean, that was actually, you swung a little faster, that's probably why I went further, but Interesting. So numbers wise, we have. Well, I think I probably felt the club head coming off. That's down probably swing. true. Yeah. I mean, commit to it. Numbers wise, I mean, it, there's we've done comparisons before where it's been this kind of comparison, right? I mean, your dispersion's a little wider, uh, but you're actually with that last swing, you swung a little faster. It kind of jumped your speed up a little bit, but much much lower spin. So well, this club says certified quality by Japan Tailor Made Golf Company Limited. 
I don't know about the certified quality Shaban here. Shaban Company this. Golf Limited? This, so this, there's a sticker on here on this counterfeit club. It says certified quality by Japan TaylorMade Golf Company Limited. Okay, well, um, don't know if it's. I have some question marks about that. Of the quality, yes. So, numbers. You still, you actually hit the, the counterfeit further. Much less spin though, about 600 okay. RPM spin lower, 6240 to 6888, or 6868. Um, four yards further carry, six yards further total. Um, you had the exact same club speed, 91.0, and the exact same ball speed, 130.6. Um, you just, you know, lost a club head on one of the shots, no big deal. <laughs> so, <laughs> interesting. First time for everything, right? Yeah, I suppose. Um, so I think it's interesting, you know, we, we know the ball is going further, but it's only purely because of the spin. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So the way the club's been designed, spin. it's yep. it's spinning, and we we didn't even check the loft on these. So who knows? The counterfeit yeah. club could be stronger. Could be built strong without. loft yeah. as well. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I mean, everything else is pretty close together. I know we talked about feel being a little bit harsher um, with the counterfeit club, but your numbers across the board otherwise are pretty similar. So there's our there's our our first comparison, I guess, of fake versus real. It went. <laughs> Uh, you know, the counterfeit so, club was not. doing okay in the test until the, the head fell off. So. Not how I expected that would go. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> now we got driver. Let's hope the club head stay on for this one. All right. Club number two now. Um, we've got the 913D2 driver and the counterfeit 913D2. Um, cool thing that as long as the you know, surefit hosel on the counterfeit is actually effective, we can swap <laughs> out the shaft and, hit, and use the same shafts for each one. Uh, but I'm, again, <laughs> very curious on how this goes because, as we just saw, we don't really know what to expect here. <laughs> I, hopefully it stays together. Yes. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's change these out. So we want to do the, uh, the real driver first, right? Let's do that so first. We'll yeah. do it with the exact same golf shaft. So this is 10 and a half degrees aloft, um, and we do have the Kurokagi uh, um, SFW, Mitsubishi Chemical, 50 regular flex. Okay. So once again, regular graphite shaft, yep. um, but we'll at least test with the exact same shaft. Yep. That was fairly straight. Definitely a lot more spin that I'm used to, and that's oh, this yeah. ten and a half degree driver with That's going to be flex. the case with, and if I remember right too, these Titleist drivers from, from then actually did spin a little bit more in general anyway, so. Yeah, anything kind of before the TS or the TSI TS, line, yeah. like 917 and below, did spin a little bit more. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Well, the good news is we're going to get the golf balls back. They're not going to go over the fence. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, for ten and a half degree regular mm -hmm. shafted nine thirteen driver, very good. Went nice and straight. We just know it's obviously the spin is just not fit for me. Right. It's not a fit for you, but yep. um, it was a good performer. And your dispersion, as people can see on the map, there is very good. Um, and then I wanted to see, just touch on those average numbers briefly here. Um, we've got you at 111 club speed, spin was 43.86 on average. Um, the carry of 257.5, total 264.6, so obviously the fit is not good. But your smash factor was 1.48, ball speed 164.4. And I know you were kind of even laying back a little bit too, um, just for the sake of control and hitting a 50 gram shaft. Yep. So, um, some good numbers there, I think, and uh, that's kind of what we knew. We we know about kind of the older kind of D2 type Titleist driver, very controlled, very straight ball flight. Maybe not the furthest or the most penetrating ball flight, but certainly very straight uh, when you need it to be. Yeah, spin can be your friend to keep the ball in play. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now we can go to this uh, this counterfeit driver head here, and we'll see again on, on feel and sound everything too. We'll make a, a discussion on that. But I mean, anything catch your eye on the feel and sound with that one? I mean, it felt solid. I just knew basically initially after seeing the, the, the height of the ball was gone. Yeah. It just felt like it was spinning. Yeah. It was a lot more, Which, lot more spin to it. Yeah. Um, ten and a half degrees loft, too much. It just, it felt good, but yeah. I just knew it wasn't going as far okay. as, it, as it could. All right, well, let's get to this counterfeit one here. A touch louder? Yeah, it's definitely I mean, louder. That was my first thought, I like too. I hit it pretty good. All 
All right, so the last ball, it's kind of like the others. Um, 4,600 spin, carry 254. So we can kind of look at the all the numbers with the drivers. But first, tell me the feel, the sound. Um, we talked about the look already and how it kind of has that gray crown uh, and a different kind of alignment feature on there. But to talk about the feel and the sound of that one compared to the, the real one. Yeah, I think the biggest difference is, I mean, feel is is sound. Um, yeah. It sounded louder, and then it sounded even louder on the ones I didn't quite catch in the yeah. middle. I think there was one shot that left the ball a little to the right. That one particularly sounded quite loud to yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, but, I agree. But I will have to say, off the face, there was a couple of shots there. I felt like they came off the face pretty good. Yeah. And it looked to me like they were going just a little bit further. Yeah. So, so actually, why don't I just give you the data here? Because okay. I think there's a, if I remember when I was watching, there was a couple shots that the spin was a little bit lower actually than the real one. Yep. And they kind of, because of that, took off a little bit, had that more penetrating flight and resulted in more distance. But you had a couple too where you, when you missed right, for example, it went really far right and kind of was way off target. Right, yeah, I, now I would question once again, is this 10 and a half degrees loft? Yeah, I know. Is this, is this big really driver know. set up at 10 and a half? I don't know, if you look down, do they look like they're, now they're both set at the A1 position. I mean, it, I'm not sure my, my naked eye is good enough to tell the difference, <laughs> but yep. I, there might be more loft on this real one. It's close. Yeah, because on average here, looking at the numbers, ball speed slash smash factor about the same, 1.48 with, with them. Mm -hmm. On average, the spin rate was also about the same, 40, 4278 versus 4386. So you could say that's about the same. Yeah. And on average, they were separated by half, half a half a yard mm -hmm. in total distance. So that's that's pretty pretty darn good there, comparing the, the numbers across the board. But I think the mo most important thing here is, yeah, it's going to perform pretty well on on some shots, but then the consistency. Yep. So you look at the dispersion map here, and you got a couple that are a little shorter down the middle, and then that one kind of way over there on the right. Right. I had no problem hitting the ball straight every single time with the, with the, the real actual one. real driver. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It was a pretty consistent ball flight, maybe a little fade, but it was just dead straight, very high, obviously, with the loft and kind of the way you swing. Yep. This one, it was just, you, you missed it, and it would kind of was a kind of a guess as to where it would go, and you had the one, you know, end up way on the right there. So, um, but, I think, you know, and that's a, I think you, you, you asked the question too when we were kind of hitting is, we don't really know anything about how this was constructed, this fake one. Like, I mean, it, we don't really have, you know, exacts on the materials, um, the way, you know, what machines were used to make. I mean, we don't know anything about that. So, right. um, what we do know is that the testing gave us numbers that were comparable, but I think at the end of the day, we know we have a lot more certainty, a lot more consistency with their real club, which is no surprise at all. Right, and I think that's the most important thing to, to trust is, you know, these guys, they spend a lot of time in R&D to, mm -hmm. to prepare every year's model to make sure it's the best out there. Right. I'm not sure that as much R&D is going <laughs> no. in a uh, counterfeit driver. Right, I yeah. feel very confident about that too. But um, I think, I mean, to wrap up, I think I, I would say that there's, you know, the, the vast, vast majority of golf clubs out there are absolutely real clubs made by the manufacturers there come through you know in terms of second swing when we get received clubs overwhelmingly 99.9% .9 of them certified pre-owned they go up on the website and there's just those few ones that our team when they go through the inspection they see a couple of things on there as we noted today with these clubs that might be a little off and then they, we find out that they are counterfeit say that. be cautious buying yeah. clubs used yeah and just you know can, at second swing that we do a really good quality check to make sure the clubs yeah. that we're reselling you used are not counterfeit correct correct um just yeah if you're wondering if you like maybe a feel or the sound is a little off take that look but otherwise um because you always want to have good quality golf clubs in your bag that are fit for your game so you can shoot the lowest score possible and have the most fun on the golf course, I think, is at the end of the day, the goal. So, Thomas, thanks for joining today, hitting all of the shots. Um, I think, you know, this was a pretty interesting test. We had a very eventful test, too, I think, with uh, club heads didn't quite stay on the whole time. But uh, good stuff here today.